Can you write your backend in Next.js? Next.js is a full stack framework. And the last I checked, full stack equals backend plus front end. So by definition, Next.js has backend capabilities. In fact, Next.js primarily runs on the server side. It has very little front end involvement. It usually delegates most of the front end work to React. So what does Next.js really do? A few days ago, there was a huge discussion on Twitter about whether you should use Next.js as a backend or not. It was triggered by this uh, little up and coming content creator called Theo. You might not know him. I'll put uh, a link to his channel down in the description. Theo basically asked to all of you who aren't using Next.js for your backend, why? Obviously, I responded to it very quickly with a quickly drawn out diagram about stateful versus stateless backends. But I don't think this tweet really even comes close to capturing the nuance in that argument. Before we dive into Next.js, let's first uh, talk about some technical concerns that an application has. UI is the part of your application that your user directly sees and interacts with. The UI is dependent on these two components, your front-end assets and your front-end application. The assets are uh, static assets like HTML, CSS, JavaScript files, images, fonts, things like that. And your front-end application is your JavaScript code or WebAssembly or any other language that you prefer uh, that runs in the browser and is responsible for reacting to UI events uh, or controlling the UI, uh, coordinating with the server and so on. Now, both of these components need their servers. So you need an asset server to serve these uh, static assets to your browser when it requests them. And you need an application server to uh, get your backend functionality and basically have your front-end application talk to your backend application. The backend application coordinates communication and logic between your business logic, data logic, and external integrations. And you can further classify external integrations into inbound and outbound. Inbound is when your system needs to accept or receive messages from other systems. And outbound is when your system is sending messages to other systems. Now let's highlight where Next.js really helps us. These are the components where Next.js helps you solve complexity. Next.js has features like uh, server-side rendering, static generation, um, ISR, whatever that is, I'm too dumb to figure out, um, routing, internationalization, uh, image optimization, and a lot of these uh, features that will help you a lot in these concerns. But you still have to deal with the complexity in the other areas on your own. Now, for a lot of people, that is not a deal breaker. And that is because applications don't have complexity spread evenly throughout all of these technical concerns. Let me show you what I mean. This is an application that has a lot more focus uh, and a lot more complexity on the front end. This can be apps like Zoop or Figma or Canva, um, Excalibur, Notion. These are apps that have uh, that don't have a lot of uh, complexity on the back end. You can see that, but uh, all of it is focused on the front end side. Next.js would be a great fit for an application like this because it's going to solve problems that you are going to run into a lot. Here is another application. This looks more like a content site, marketing site, blog, things like that. This has a lot more focus on assets. Uh, which means that there's going to be a lot of performance constraints. And once again, Next.js is a great fit for this application because it solves all of those problems that you will run into. And while it doesn't deal with the backend, you don't have a lot of complexity on the backend, so you don't need it. Now let's look at an entirely different class of applications here. This could be a microservice. It could be a bot. It could be a data ETL process. It could be an AI algorithm or any sort of a background process or that you want to delegate some computation to. This doesn't have a front end. Uh, Next.js is utterly useless for an application like this because Next.js is solving all the problems that you don't have and it's solving none of the problems that you do. Now let's add a little bit of UI to this. So now maybe this is a Discord bot or a Twitch bot that has a UI that you can use to configure it. I still wouldn't recommend you to use Next.js for this because once again, the problems that Next.js is solving, you are not really going to run into those because you don't have a very complex and very uh, requirement heavy front end. 
you need a lot more solutions on your backend side because that's where you're focusing. Now, this is the kind of application that I am building currently at work. Once again, I am not using Next.js for this project because it's not really solving the big problems that I have. You can see here that the two bright red hotspots in this application are the backend logic and the business logic, which are then followed by data and the front end, and finally a little bit of assets and uh, external integrations. For applications like these, I would instead recommend something like Nest.js, Nest with an S, not with an X. They, the two have very similar names, I don't know maybe they were intentionally planning on tracking us but anyways a framework like nest helps solve complexity on these areas on the back end and that is what an application like this really needs so i would recommend using that for an application like this now that that is out of the way let's dive more into my contribution to this twitter conversation my argument about a stateful versus a stateless backend is just one example of how uh, Next.js doesn't help solve complexity in backend logic. And that is because Next.js has a really simple mental model of the backend. Next.js wants you to think almost purely in terms of HTTP functions. You will either write a function that will accept an incoming request and uh, fetch some data and throw them out as props to a component or you will write an API handler or a middleware that once again accepts an HTTP request, does some operations, and returns an HTTP response. All your backend code has to live and run within these two boxes. Now, when your backend starts getting complex, you often want to change this mental model and instead think of your HTTP operations as something that can trigger side effects. Now, these side effects can be things that take a while and are not super important or critical to the main operation. So you don't want the user to wait until all these side effects are finished. For example, when a new user signs up, you might also want to create a profile for them and you might also want to send them an email. Now, these are things that are not critical to a user signing up. If one of these two things fail, you don't want to fail the entire user registration process because the registration still happened. You just want to do these other two things as a side effect of that registration. This is something you cannot easily do in Next.js because once again, Next.js wants all your backend code to live in HTTP functions. Now you can do things like send an HTTP response back and then continue doing things in that function or trigger an asynchronous operation without a wait in front of it and then just return your function. But these are not good mental models to use when uh, you are mapping out these complex workflows. Maybe you can do that if you just have one or two of these in your entire application. But the fact that you have complex workflows like these is an indicator that you might have more in the future. You might have to build a, a couple more of these tomorrow or uh, and maybe by next year you'll have 10 of these or maybe half your entire application will be these complex workflows. It's better to solve uh, these complexities before your app becomes a ball of mud. Do you have backend code running in a Next.js server? Let me know down in the comments. And while you're there, please subscribe to the channel.